So you just found yourself walking inside a shop and you've seen this beautiful range of Italian machines. These beautiful shiny chromes or blacks and timbers. And you look at them and think, which one of those is going to suit me best? And the list of specifications you really don't understand. Well, today I'm going to cover things like what is a vibration pump? What's a rotary pump? What does PID mean? And whether these are the features you're looking for in your next home espresso machine. Beside me here, I have a range of coffee machines from Quick Mill and Rocket. And to the untrained eye, they look very similar. You can see they've got brew heads, steam taps, hot water taps, drip trays, all those things look pretty similar. But it's what's inside that really makes a difference on the machine that would best suit you. All of these machines are what we call a HX machine. They do have this front exposed brewing head with a lever control. And when you activate that lever, you're either activating a vibration pump or a rotary pump. And that's the first thing that you probably want to start to think about to work out how that's going to best suit you at home. So what is a vibration pump? Well, this is a vibration pump. You can see it's quite small and basically when it's charged with power, there's a couple of magnets which move a shaft which make the water come from the tank straight into the brew head. Every time that that happens, it's a vibration. So it's a little bit noisier and generally you'll find this kind of pump in the appliance store entry level coffee machines. And they're actually about half the size of this pump that we find in the Italian made machines. Now, it's a great little pump to allow you to brew coffee, but there's no flexibility. It doesn't allow you to change the pressure or allow you to run mains water into your coffee machine. You have to utilize the tank that is inbuilt to the coffee machine to use a vibration pump. So what is a rotary pump? Well, this is a rotary pump and this is an electric motor. This one's out of a commercial coffee machine, but the only difference you're gonna find when you have it in one of these domestic machines is this electric motor is about half the size. Now, obviously it's, a, it's, a, it's enabling you to um, provide a much better motor to power the pump. The pump's gonna have a valve and it's also got a variability valve on it as well. So we could actually change the set pressure of the actual water that's going into the brew head by adjusting it. Now, that also means that if you've got mains water, you can run a fitting straight from a filter that's under your tap into here, and then the other hose would come straight out into your coffee machine. And that means that you're always gonna have filtered, good quality and good pressure water coming into your coffee machine so that you don't have to worry about all those minerals and, and yucky stuff building up inside your boiler over time. So that is a huge advantage. If you're looking to plumb your machine, that's the only option you can go. If you're looking at a machine, a good way to see if uh, a machine has a vibration or a rotary pump is have a look at the gauges on the machine. If there's only one gauge and that gauge is, is going from zero to three, that is only showing the steam pressure of the machine. If you've got another gauge or it's a dual gauge and then it's got a, a numbering system uh, as well as the zero to three on the other half of that gauge, it has a zero to nine, that's measuring the pump pressure of a machine. And most of the time that means you're gonna have a rotary pump installed in there and then you can see that that is getting a good solid pressure into your head. Now going back to that first gauge where I said zero to three, usually the needle is sitting around 1.2 and that is the amount of steam pressure inside the boiler of a coffee machine. In an entry level machine, that is using what's called a pressure stat. And simply, it's a, basically a copper pin, which we can wind up and down with a spring. And once the pressure makes that copper move, it will cut off the element and keep it at the set temperature that the machine is required to operate to get steam or boiling water. When you start to look at higher end machines, they have what's called a PID. Now that is a digital um, probe with a circuit board that is measuring the temperature and that allows you to change that number through um, some sort of app or an inbuilt setting inside the machine so you can nail that particular temperature that you're looking for to either have your brew head set to a particular temperature or change your rear boiler and your steam if you need to. In Espresso, we always start to talk now about recipes and, and time and, and how you can create an amazing espresso time and time again and being repeatable. Now in the entry level models, they generally don't have a shot timer. 
But if you're going to look at a machine, something like this Aquila up here, that has the PID, it doubles as a shot timer. So the moment that you activate the lever, it's going to change from a temperature setting through to a shot timer. So that's really handy to be able to start that timer without having to have a manual button somewhere or manual timer for you to play with. A lot of people ask us about noise on coffee machines. Well, definitely the vibration pump is noisier, which is this one here in the quick mill. And you can hear that vibration happening a bit. When we look at the Aquila here and it's got the rotary pump, it's certainly a lot quieter. And it can handle a lot more volume of water. So that's definitely a benefit if you're not trying to wake up the other people in your house first thing in the morning. One thing across a range of different machines is how much power is used and the size of the element. So some of these machines range from 1400 watts up to 1800 watts. So if you're thinking about power, you've got to consider um, maybe looking at the lower wattage unit and how do they achieve that? Well, they'll have a smaller element or they may have a much better thermal wrap that goes around the boiler that is inside the coffee machine. Now, when we look at that boiler, you'll start to see things like 1.4 litres, 1.6 or 1.8 litre boilers when there's a single boiler in a machine. Now, if you think about that boiler, the bottom half of it is going to be hot water, which you can use for your hot water tap, and the top half is going to be steam. So if we've got 1.8 litres, we've got, in theory, 900 uh, mils of steam and 900 mils of hot water to make coffee with. The smaller that gets, so let's say a 1.2 litre boiler, if you're going to try and do quite a few coffees time and, uh, time, and, time and time again, you're going to start to lose a little bit of steam pressure. And you're going to have to let that machine recover before you can make the next coffee. And all of this whole range behind me have a three litre water tank, which is inside the back and very easy to remove. So I wouldn't look at a machine that's anything lower than three litres. That's definitely the standard for a good quality machine. So now you've worked out what you want out of a machine, some of the brands like Quick Mill or The Rocket over here are going to be styled differently. You may pay a little bit more for something that's stainless, maybe black and timber, or something like the Aquila that's white here, or some of the extras like Cool Touch Steam Wands, or the bigger triple size group handles that Rocket give you. So you want to look and find out what kind of coffee you're going to make, and which of those value points is going to suit you best. So hopefully that helps you to decide what kind of uh, Italian style coffee machine suits you best. And if you've got any further questions about any of those areas or some of those specs that you see on a machine that you're looking at, I'll happily answer them. So leave that question in the comments below. And thanks very much for watching everyone. We'll catch you next time. Cheers.